After months of campaigning, Election Day is finally here. It's time for voters to decide. Midterm elections are always a challenge for the party in power, and this year is no exception. Democrats say our democracy itself is at stake. Republicans say the focus is on the economy and inflation. It's a face-off for control of Congress. And who better to speak to on a day like today than CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. He'll be tracking the races that could shift the balance of power tonight. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to be with you. First of all, you've caught up with voters from several states during the campaigns. You've been all over the place, really. What issues are driving turnout today? And really, what is at stake here tonight, Robert? Everything's at stake. Control of Congress, which decides uh, how policy goes in Washington. How it decides, in many respects, how people live their lives, not in terms of controlling their lives, but in terms of uh, how the economy is going to be managed by the federal government, by Congress. And the economy is certainly front and center for so many voters I've spoken to in recent weeks. They've told CBS News that they hurt when they go to the pump. They hurt when they go to the grocery store. The question is, who do they blame? Which party do they blame? Do they blame the Democrats who are in power in the House and the Senate and the White House? Or do they blame the Republicans and, in some respects, the corporations who are aligned with the GOP, at least in terms of economic policy and the corporate profits that have been pretty prominent for some of these corporations in recent years? That's the, the key question tonight. Who will shoulder that responsibility, that political blame for how voters are frustrated with the economy. You know, uh, I know you're covering the whole country, and, and you know in New York even, a blue state, a bluer than blue state, we've got some congressional races, races not just here on Long Island, but upstate in the Hudson Valley, which are really head-to-head -head right now, races that a lot of people would have never expected, um, in part because of redistricting. But um, what is your sense about these races where, uh, hey, we had no idea this could be happening, even in a state state like New York. The last time you've seen so many competitive House races in New York State, it was 2010, 12 years ago, and that was a Republican wave year. Some New York Republicans I've spoken to uh, this week say this year could be like 2010, could be like even 1994, the 1990s, when George Pataki was able to win the gubernatorial race in New York. And when you look back at New York politics and you think about the rise of Rudy Giuliani in New York City, the rise of George Pataki in New York State, it was fueled in part by concerns about issues that are front uh, and center today, the economy, but also crime. Crime is a major issue for New York voters we've reported on, and that could lead someone like Lee Zeldin to have a real shot at winning the governor's race, though this is typically a blue state. Uh, and Kathy Hochul, the incumbent governor, uh, has run a competitive race, uh, but it's certainly a, a, a toss-up in the sense that it could go any way tonight if the national winds are blowing in a particular direction. It, it truly is, uh, Robert. I got to tell you, covering this town for 30 years, I can't even believe what we're seeing tonight, particularly from Zeldin. Yes, he is exploiting the crime issue, and to a great extent, Hochul seemed to sit out, sit out the campaign, and maybe she's paying the price for it, but uh, she may or may not hold on. We shall see. Let's talk about some of the highly contested Senate races across the country, Pennsylvania, Georgia. Uh, Georgia may not even be decided tonight. Uh, what do you expect and uh, just how careful, um, any chance we could get some real meaningful results that could tell us which way the Senate goes tonight? For the House, you want to keep an eye on the early returns out of New Hampshire. Indiana House races and some key races in Virginia. Those are the three areas I'm paying attention to early in the evening between, say, 8, 9, 10 p.m., because we may have a sense of where this night is going based on what happens in New Hampshire, Virginia, and Indiana. When it comes to the Senate, the race I'm going to be paying close attention to is Pennsylvania, the Democrat John Fetterman versus the Republican Mehmet Oz. I interviewed Fetterman over the past few days. He needs to try to overcome that Trump coalition in Pennsylvania and also win over suburban voters. Mehmet Oz has tried to do just that in this closing lap of the campaign. Also keeping a close eye on Ohio, Tim Ryan, the Democrat there, has run a Senate race where he has made appeals to union workers to union leaders, to working Republicans in the state and independents. But it's an uphill climb in a state like Ohio that went twice for Trump. I got to ask you before you go, because no one's done better, better reporting on Donald Trump through the years. And what is your sense right now? I gather the president, the former president, is going to be making this announcement within the next couple of weeks. Um, what about blowback in the party? Do you think anybody like a DeSantis will have the ability or the chance to challenge him? 
former President Trump very well might announce an exploratory committee or even a formal campaign next week in Florida. He's teased that announcement in recent days. But that doesn't mean other Republicans aren't going to run. Maryland, uh, former Maryland governor, outgoing Maryland governor, Larry Hogan, he's le is in his final year of his final term. He wants to still run regardless of whether Trump runs. Former New Jersey governor Chris Christie has signaled he might run even if Trump runs. The big question is, will Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, Governor Glenn Youngkin of Virginia, seen as two of the rising stars in the party, will they still consider this if Trump gets in so early? They might wait and see how a Trump candidacy goes. But in politics, as they often tell me behind the scenes in both parties, if you want a shot at power, you actually have to run. So Trump is moving toward a run. The question is, if he does so, who else will have the political guts to challenge him and his political capital inside the GOP? Robert Costa, great stuff as always. We'll be looking for you all night long on CBS News, and we really appreciate you stopping by right now. Thank you. Robert Costa, chief, uh, CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent for CBS News. And stay with CBS News New York throughout the evening as we bring you election results from the tri-state area and around the nation. Following our newscasts here, live coverage will begin right here at 8 p.m. with our first update of the night after polls start to close and will continue all across our platforms throughout and even beyond the 11 p.m. hour. The 11 p.m. hour. I'm Dick Brennan. Stick around.